Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker Tools. Tonight I want to talk about which brand is going to be the least expensive to get into and which brand is going to be the most expensive and you might be shocked by some of the results. So let's go ahead and get right into that on Tinker with Tools. So anytime I post a video, I do get comments about how expensive brand A or brand B is and how this brand is a better value and just how different the pricing is on different tools. So what I wanted to do tonight is I want to actually take a standard set of tools across a bunch of different brands and attempt to show you the price difference. Now for starters, where possible, we are buying bare tools. There are a couple of items on here that you cannot buy as bare tools. If for certain brands, I'll mention those when we talk about those brands. But for the most part, we bought bare tools for the four main tools. So the tools that I decided to go for that were widely available across all these different brands are going to be that of a hammer drill, an impact driver, a circular saw in the seven and a quarter inch range, and then last but not least, a reciprocating saw. For the most part, we are going with the top tier of these tools. Hammer drills, there's really a top and then there's nothing really else below it. But for example, on the recip saw, I'm not going to the the super saws all category i'm just kind of going with their top tier and kind of that main reciprocating saw phase these tool brands are not all created equal it, it's not apples to apples all the way across the board it is going to be a little bit different that's not the point we're trying to make here tonight we're simply trying to show where the best value is in these tool brands and what you can get we're going to kind of go through we're going to rank them from cheapest and then we're going to go all the way up to the most expensive We'll show you some different stats on different tools and where value can be had with different brands versus with others. And then we'll talk about some of the oddities that kind of stick out on that. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be starting with, like I said, our cheapest brand that we're going to talk about today. Now the number one best value in tools right now is going to be the new Hercules brushless lineup. When we're talking about these tools that I mentioned, this is the only brand that came under $500. In fact, they are the only brand that came under $600. The next closest brand is 667. This is clearly the most economical way to get these tools. And now you are getting them with a five-year warranty. They can be exchanged in store, pretty much no questions asked. Right now, the number one economic value is clearly going to be Hercules, brushless, and with some of those tools, they're going to outperform a lot of the other more economic options on this list. Number one spot is going to go to Hercules. All right, number two is the one that comes with the first caveat, and that is going to be that of Skill. Now, Skill was able to put together a list of tools that kind of meet this criteria, but they clearly have some exceptions. Now their drill and impact driver come in at good values, but then their circular saw, the only seven and a quarter inch circular saw they feature is their rear handle, which you can only buy right now in a kit form with two five amp hour batter. Now at 249, it doesn't price itself out of the market of the other kind of more premium tool brands here. So it's not necessarily a detriment, but it certainly is the bulk of what you're paying for in this. You cannot actually purchase that five amp hour battery at most retailers. The only way to get that battery is to buy it with that circular saw. The skill brand is not bad, but you can get better value and arguably better performance. The next two are going to be Craftsman and Ryobi. They are about a $50 price difference. Performance wise, I think they're very similar. Um, I would probably go with Ryobi just because I've really haven't been too impressed with a lot of the Craftsman tools. With a $50 price difference, I'd probably tip over to the Ryobi side of that, but I'd understand if people want to go Craftsman as well. So they're going to be coming in right there at our third and fourth spot. All right, now the fifth and sixth spot, we're going to be talking about two that I think are very comparable brands. It's going to be Cobalt over at Lowe's here in the United States, and then Rigid at Home Depot, which is going to be kind of their two different house brands for those two different stores, if you will. Now, Cobalt and Rigid, I think, offer some really compelling value. Cobalt is actually an interesting one here because right now you cannot actually buy the XTR hammer drill or the XTR impact driver. And I think it was also the recip saw that you could not buy tool only. You were actually buying those in kits and then their batteries are just kind of dead cheap. And in that, I believe you're actually getting five or six batteries because that is the only way to buy those tools currently. If I'm looking at how Cobalt compares to Skill, I think it is clearly the better value and it is definitely the more performance focused tool in my opinion. If I actually adjusted the pricing so that you did not have to factor in that those batteries, because you don't need to buy them where you're getting the batteries, 
then that would actually put it down below Ryobi. Really is a very intriguing value point. Rigid is another one, in my opinion, that you're not going to be comparing the performance of Rigid down to the likes of Craftsman or Ryobi, but instead you're going to be comparing it more upwards towards the more professional lineups that we're going to talk about in a minute. All right, so then the next spot, I've actually got two spots for Metabo HPT, and I'll tell you why. Um, as I was trying to price this out, my go-to source for Metabo HPT has always been Lowe's. Um, but I've noticed that ever since Flex came into stores, they moved Metabo HPT around, and pretty much almost always their tools are on clearance or a pretty deep discount. You cannot actually currently buy their top tier hammer drill at Lowe's. It is out of stock and they haven't necessarily made an effort to bring that back in stock. Well, it still is in stock at other places, but the fact that Lowe's is not carrying it made me wonder what is going on with the relationship of Metabo HPT in Lowe's stores. Now, as I got down into other tools, that was another place where I had a hard time finding specific matches to what we were doing. I actually had to go with the rear handle. Now, it was still cheaper than a lot of the more premium brands, so I just kind of put it in at that price. And on Amazon, the prices on Metabo multivolt batteries were actually quite cheap. I could get Metabo HPT all the way down to 885 if I bought it kind of at the more expensive prices and just kind of cobbled together what I could. It actually tipped the scales over $1,000. At that $800 price point, I think the Metabo HPT is a really compelling value. If you're talking about the $1,000 price point, then it becomes less of a value in my opinion. All right, so then the next two we're gonna talk about is once again, we're gonna go back to Lowe's and talk about two more of their brands. One of these though was an absolute and utter shock to me. That is going to be that Flex came in at $1,026 for these items. When Flex first came onto the market, I felt like they were expensive especially for being a new player in the market. And it was annoying that you could only buy them in kit form. Well, now you can actually get almost all their tools in bare tool. You can go ahead and pick these items up individually. And although that's not the most economical way to buy stuff, it was actually kind of surprising to see how economical the brand is currently for the performance you're getting for those tools. $1,026 for a tool company that offers performance that beats or exceeds most of the other brands on this market, you do also have a lifetime warranty with that. That was a shock to me. I was surprised at how economical it was. And it clearly becomes kind of a value standout, in my opinion, of something you could go with. Now, the next up in that $1,000 range is going to be Bosch. Bosch at 1083 it's not more compelling to me than Flex and a couple of these other brands. If you do like Bosch tools, you're not getting too terrible of a value there. All right, so now we're going to talk about the next three. And these are what I'm going to go ahead and call just the big three. Milwaukee, DeWalt, and Makita LXT. These tools companies are obviously all price competitive with each other. They all came in ranging $1,100 to $1,200 for these tools. These are clearly three of the five most expensive tool brands out there. I'm not saying they're cheap by any means, but as far as getting good value for what you're getting, they are expensive, but they're not the most expensive that are out there. And so I think if you do like a solid, reliable, professional tool platform, I think any of these three are going to be able to do it for you. I get that there's gonna be personal preference between the three brands. All right, a note on the LXT. I did price it out with a large and a small battery, but one thing I need to note here, while you can buy their seven and a quarter circular saw as a tool only, and it was fairly price competitive, the only seven and a quarter inch circular saws that they offer are actually going to be on their X2 platform. And so with Makita, if you want to be able to run that traditional seven and a quarter saw on their LXT, you are going to be going with the X2 platform. And so that'll actually drive the price of the LXT up a little bit because you will have to have two of the five amp hour batteries to be able to run that LXT X2 saw. Now let's get down to our last two. Now this is going to be one that I think surprised me the most. So the second most expensive brand was actually Hilti. Now it's not that Hilti being one of the more expensive brands is what was shocking to me. It's that they weren't the most expensive brand and they're actually fairly price competitive with the likes of DeWalt. Hilti, you're getting a 20 year warranty with a really impeccable service record for those tools and just a really rugged and robust tool. That price, if they offered a traditional seven and a quarter circular saw, it would actually probably come in less than what you're getting over here under the Wald XR. They actually only offer a six and a half on the Neuron platform or their rear handle seven and a quarter. 
That rear handle seven and a quarter is actually $369. Overall, I think Hilti being price competitive or was one of the most shocking things about putting this list together. Now, obviously availability of their tools is not the reason why you're going with that brand. It's going to be more that warranty and just the reputation that Hilti has built up in the marketplace. But I was actually shocked at how good a value they were compared to those other big three. All right, so what is the one brand or the one platform that we haven't talked about yet? Well, that would be my beloved Makita XGT. No one ever said they were cheap tools, although I am a little shocked at just how expensive it is compared to these other brands. The most expensive one we've talked about today is $1,255 for four tools, two batteries, and a charger. When you start talking about the Makita XGT for that same equipment, you're talking about $1,578. That is a lot of money. Them being the most expensive on here, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It is one of those things that still hurt a little as I typed in that number knowing that I own all but one of the tools that's on there. All right, so no, by no means am I saying this is the most economical way to buy these tools. I think you can go out and get clearance deals, bonus buy one, get one type sales, combo kits that are gonna include batteries so you don't have to buy the batteries and the charger separately. Those are all things that are going to alter the value comparison in terms of what you can get. That is going to be your best value for buying tools and getting into these platforms. But this exercise was more so just to illustrate where the value lies with these different brands. In the future, I want to do some more testing where we compare different hierarchies, for example, on TTI going from Ryobi to Rigid to Milwaukee, the value comparison between the three, and are you getting sufficient performance to warrant jumping up in price? I think that type of analysis is really helpful to be able to make decisions. But this one was just a fun exercise, in my opinion, to be able to see where these different companies rank in terms of being able to buy tools on them. So go ahead and let me know if this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching Tinker with Tools.